So yeah, can you could you mention this, but can you kind of elaborate on the what the issue is with meat and why it's so horrible for our planet, basically? Yeah, well, I think if you look at the agricultural system, I think it's, it's something like 80% of the land we use for agriculture is, is used for livestock production. But that only produces less than 20% of our calories. So, and that's because, you know, animals are not very efficient at converting, you know, what they eat into proteins and calories. Mm. So, so we have to have an enormous amount of land use, we need an enormous amount of water to, you know, sort of produce this grass and other feed for the animals. Um, and there's an enormous amount of pollution associated with that and greenhouse gases. Uh, and then because we need a lot of land use, we're like going into forests and we're decreasing biodiversity. So there's all sorts of issues with, especially sort of livestock and animal products, but particularly like sort of beef and pigs and a little bit of chickens. <laughs> so I think, I mean, that's why people like Impossible Foods and you'd be on me to doing so well because they've got a product that is, you know, really addressing this issue. Uh, and I think what they've really done is they've targeted meat eaters. It's like, can we create a product that people actually want to eat and actually want to incorporate into diet? Yeah. Because if it, doesn't, if it doesn't taste good, it doesn't matter how sustainable and healthy it is, nobody's going to eat it and even have no impact. But they, they've managed to create something you know, from plants which actually tastes very similar to beef. Mm-hmm. So I think, that, I think that's probably been like the biggest revolution in food science in the last sort of five or ten years. It's sort of our plant-based meat area. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's still a lot of work to be done, but I think it's the science behind that is incredibly complicated. I mean, if you think, you know, if you actually took a microscope and you looked inside like a piece of beef or chicken or something, it's got an incredibly complicated structural architecture. And that structural architecture determines like what it tastes like and what it looks like and what it feels in your mouth. And to try and mimic that from plants is, you know, really, really challenging. So it's like, I don't know, trying to make uh, like a house out of tennis balls or something like that. <laughs> so it's like completely different materials, but you're trying to get something that's exactly the same at the end. Yeah. Uh, so you've got to understand, you know, like what makes it look the way it does, you know, what makes it feel the way it does, what makes it taste the way it does. And, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of really high level science involved behind that. Yeah. Well, it's remarkable. It really does. Like when you, you know, if you just eat it by itself, you can, you could taste the difference. It's not meat, but it's, it's close enough. It tastes good. But then especially if you're making a whole burger and, you know, put in ketchup and whatever you put on there, like you can't even tell the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And if you got to that point where it tastes better or, you know, you can't taste the difference and why eat beef when you can have this. Yeah. Yeah. But I think there's still some work. I mean, I think the nutritional aspect still has to be worked on. I think um, at the moment they're probably comparable nutritionally, like a, a plant-based and, and a, a real meat burger. Uh-huh. But I mean, I think there's definitely ways you could re-engineer the plant-based one to make it uh, healthier for you, you know, to so right. make it like, less fat, less salt, uh, and actually fortify it with all the sort of nutrients that vegetarians don't get, like vitamin B12 and, you know, vitamin D and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, yeah, yeah and again, again, there's a lot of interesting science behind doing that with all this encapsulation technology, the kind of stuff that we work with. Yeah. Oh, man, it's so cool. When I think it's great, too, is how, you know, the Impossible Meat and Beyond Burger and all that stuff is so, it's, it's like blown up. It's really popular now, too. A lot of people know about it and have, have tried it. So I think it's, it must be great on that level to just kind of open people's eyes to the possibility of this and, and sharing what the issue of meat is. And here's a good alternative for you. Yeah, and I think, you know, like, you know, Pat Brown has started Impossible Foods. I mean, he started as a professor at Stanford, was it like 10 or 12 years ago, he, he left, and now he's got a $4 billion company. Yeah. So I think that's you know, absolutely incredible. And I, I think that's been a real inspiration for a lot of people, a lot of young scientists in the food area seeing that as a paradigm and think, like, I can do, you know, I don't know if I can do that, but, I, you know, I want to do something like that. I want to use my science to change the world. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, every burger that somebody eats from Impossible Burgers or Beyond Me, you know, that's a benefit for sustainability. Right. No, it's awesome that you can that you can build such a great product and business and be profitable, but also it's causing, it's a great cause for good. That's yeah, awesome. I mean, it's like driving a Prius. You know, it's yeah, right. Driving a Prius, yeah. Yeah. You know, like a small change you can make in your life that can have a really big impact, especially if everyone does it. Yeah. So are there... Do you have come across people who are have concerns about the safety of eating basically like scientific food, like stuff that's been created like that? Do, do people just think it's unhealthy or something like that? 
Yeah, a lot of people do. And I think, I mean, and, and some of it's really justified. I mean, I think ideally, if we could all cook all our own food. Hey, thanks for watching this video. This is my dog, Murphy. And these are dog treats. Now I'll give Murphy one of these dog treats. And all you have to do is press the like button. Just press that little like button right down there at the bottom of this video. And this sweet, adorable, cute little puppy gets a treat. All thanks to you. All right, you did it? Okay, I believe you. You said you did it. There you go, Murph. She got that treat because of you. Now, I'll eat one of these treats, and all you have to do is click that subscribe button. Right there, pointing to it. Just click that subscribe button. Subscribe to curiosity -ness with me, Travis DeRose. Get lots of good video, and I'll eat this treat. All right, you did that too? That's not very good, but I'm not very